I bring in now the chair of the Freedom House Board of Trustees, former Congresswoman Jane Harmon. She was ranking member of the Intelligence Committee four years after 9-11. Um, Thank you so much for joining us on this. We appreciate it. I want to read for you a quote from uh, the New York Times about the relationship between the United States uh, and China, um, written by a Harvard professor, Graham Allison. I'm saying, first, the U.S. and China will be the fiercest rivals history has ever seen. Going on to write, second, each nation's very survival requires a degree of cooperation from the other. Do you agree with this assessment? Uh, sort of. I have great admiration for Graham, uh, but he did write a book called The Thucydides Trap, where he says war is inevitable right. uh, by a, a, a growing power against a, a, an established power. I don't think that's true, and I don't think Joe Biden thinks that's true, and I actually don't even think Xi Jinping thinks that's true. Uh, I was going to answer your earlier question to your superb all-woman team that you were just questioning <laughs> uh, by saying that a goal of this uh, summit is to manage distrust. Both sides bring distrust into this equation. And the thing that has to happen is for both sides to make their, their, their boundaries clear and hopefully to have a candid conversation. I think Joe Biden can handle that kind of conversation very well. We'll have to see if Xi Jinping can, but he has a lot riding on this. He's got I would add to yeah. his troubles that his quarantine, uh, this total quarantine to COVID over many years, really crashed his economy. Plus, uh, the the uh, the, the uh, single child policy of China over some years has resulted in negative birth rate. So they they may have they have an un underemployed young group of people and a small group growing after them. So they have a kind of bleak economic picture here. And I, I would just add one more thing. I think that. Uh, uh, Xi Jinping sees this not just as a political trip, but as as uh, your, your commentator said, as a business trip. He's trying to encourage U.S. business to invest because the tech sanctions Biden imposed against national security uh, technology uh, and some other things have really hurt his economy. Aside from talking about the economy, um, there's also a geopolitical situation as well. You have two wars raging overseas right now. And she certainly has somewhat of an allyship, a friendship with President Vladimir Putin, along with Iranian President um, Raisi. We know, obviously, Raisi supporting, backing Hamas, backing Hezbollah, and uh, involved in this proxy war with the United States. How much of this conversation do you think the president will be having with um, China's President Xi in, in trying to influence his discussions with President Putin and Iran's president? Uh, I think that'll be on the table. I think that uh, Ukraine will be on the table, too. China's moves in the Middle East have been quite tentative. It's Russia that's kind of all in, and obviously Ukraine, Russia, China, uh, the the North Korea are, are an axis of trouble uh, wherever in in the world in certain senses. But but I think it will come up, and uh, I I I think she will be cautious. I don't think she wants a major regional war in the Middle East. It's not good for him. I don't think he wants a major regional war anywhere. And, and let's put on the table, too, there are elections. Uh, Taiwan is having elections early next year. And uh, obviously, U.S. policy remains that, that Taiwan is a part of China, the one China policy. And that will be clarified, I think. But in exchange, uh, the U.S. will want to know that China doesn't meddle in Taiwan's election. And I think human rights, you, you mentioned that I'm I'm, I'm uh, now co-chair of the Freedom House right. Board, that human rights, especially this mass incarceration of the Uyghurs, will be raised, too. It's uh, probably uh, the biggest, uh, you could call it genocide, going on in the world. And China is carrying, carrying this on and has been for years. Congresswoman, I got one more for you, uh, and that is reestablishing military communication. We know that she um, cut off military communication um, during the Chinese um, spy balloon incident. Um, Secretary of State Tony Blinken tried to reestablish that this past summer was unsuccessful. Um, do you see that as being a, a top priority for the president? And what is um, the disadvantage for not having that line open? Well, the disadvantage is the possibility of miscommunication, misunderstanding each other's intentions. And let's understand from Gaza, Israel, that weaponized disinformation is a major tool of Hamas, as an example. And disinformation can lead to misunderstanding. Uh, these ties were cut off because of Nancy Pelosi's visit to China, which she had to Taiwan, which she had every right to make. 
as a Speaker of the House, which is an independent branch of our government. Uh, but the Chinese got mad, cut off the ties. Uh, the Pentagon, and especially the new commander of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, have been urging they be reestablished. I think this would be a win for both sides. I do think it's in China's interest, uh, and I know it's in the U.S. interest uh, to have uh, communications that are accurate between our militaries.